Good morning, Evergreen. Morning. Happy Easter. I invite you all to stand if you're able to. We're going to sing. We're going to worship together. We invite you to sing along with us. You guys ready to sing? Here we go. A gray light dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take to free us all from sin and grave. Perfect man would have to die And only he could pay that price Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Oh don't lose hope cause Sunday's coming Devil you're done you better start running Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Yeah So we let those soldiers take him in As his friend betrayed him with a kiss And there before the mocking crowd Like a lamb to the slaughter did it make Sound. Then he carried that cross to Calvary And he shed his blood to set us free As the nails went in and the sky went dark The redemption of the world was on his heart Friday's good cause Sunday head the son of god and man was dead with bloody hands tears on their face they laid him down inside sing this out together but that wasn't the end that wasn't the
Jesus reigns upon the throne. All heaven sings to him alone. We watch and wait like a bride for her groom. Oh, church, arise. He's coming soon. Yeah. so glad you're here. My name is Ilsian, and I am one of the pastors here, and I want to welcome you to this faith community that we call Evergreen Christian Center, and today we get to celebrate. We get to cheer. Some of us will get to cry, you know, all kinds of celebration happening this morning, um, but I want to let you know what you can expect today. For about an hour, we're going to continue to sing, but as we sing in these next two songs, we are going to celebrate and we're going to celebrate good, a lo bueno, like we say in Spanish. We're going to celebrate a lo bueno because 22 people have made a decision to put their faith in Jesus. And they are going public with their faith. And so when they come out of the water, we're going to celebrate that they're being raised to life in Jesus. So that's when you come in. And I want you to cheer. I want you to clap. I want you to celebrate. If you want to cry, cry. Whatever you do, just let it out. God is good. And we have a lot to celebrate. So we're excited. So we invite you to be a part of that today. And if you're joining us online, a very special welcome to our online guests. We're so grateful you're here. If this is your first time, we, you are a big deal. I want you to know that. If you're a guest here, it's your first time. You're a big deal to us. You're a big deal to the person that invited you today. So welcome. We are so grateful that you're here. Okay. And as we go on throughout the service, if there's a seat that's empty next, you just scoot in. Do the e-shuffle. The e-shuffle, you know, make sure that you leave the seats on the end available for our guests that will be coming in within the next few minutes. But right there where you are, are we ready to continue to celebrate that Jesus is alive? Yeah? Okay, I want to invite you to sing, and I want you to clap and celebrate the baptisms that are going to happen today. So let's do that this morning.
empty grave, a life that's changed, it all points to Jesus' name. If you've been searching and nothing's been working, what do we got? I've got good news. Jesus loves you. No matter what you bring, He's still in love with you. He's always in love. Always in love with you. Yes, He is. Always in love with you. He's always been. Always in love with you. Always in love with you. Always in love
there's a, the account of the resurrection starts with women going to the tomb and they're worried. They don't know who is going to remove the stone so that we could do what we want to do, which was prepare Jesus' body and pour the anointings and the balms. And they were worried about something that God had already taken care of. And I just want to encourage you this morning. I don't know what you came in here expecting. I don't know how you showed up this morning or what's going on in your life this week. But I want to encourage you. Would you trust God with whatever you're worried about? I know that he's already working on it. If he's able to bring a dead body back to life, he's able to do the impossible in your life. So I want to encourage you to pray in this moment. And for us, prayer is just a way to communicate with God. It's a conversation with God. And it could be in your mind. It could be in your heart. It could be out loud, whatever you're comfortable with. But I'm going to invite you in your own words. Would you connect? Would you have a conversation with God with what's going on in your life or where you need him to show up or what is warring your heart right now, whether you're in this room or joining us online? Would you do that in this moment? to you and as everybody has shared and talked to you about what's going on in their lives Lord we want to thank you because you are the one that is able to roll the stone away you're able to be the one to move the obstacles from our life that keep us from you God and Lord we pray for those that are going through a health crisis in this moment where they need your healing hand upon their bodies God and we thank you for the miracles that have already taken place where impossible surgeries Lord have, have finished successfully God Lord we thank you that you are good and that you are faithful God we thank you that we can trust you with every tiny little detail of our lives that there is nothing too hard for you that we can leave and bring our pain and our disappointment and trust that you will turn it around for something good. Lord, we thank you that because Jesus is alive, our hope can remain. Even in the darkest hour, our hope will be in you, Jesus. So thank you that you fill our hearts with hope and freedom and joy this morning. Jesus, we love you and we thank you. Can you say amen? And amen is a way to say, I agree with that. So thank you for agreeing with us in prayer. And you know, we have this tradition um, growing up in the church that when on, especially on Easter Sunday, that the person up here says something like this. They say, um, they say he is risen. And then the the people respond, he is risen indeed. So can we practice that this morning if you're comfortable with that? Yeah? Okay, here we go. He is risen. He is risen oh, you guys are good. Can we clap it up just for this time for the people that got baptized? God is so, so good. And now I'm going to invite you. Would you turn to the people around you and tell them, I'm so glad you're here. Tell me about your plans today. What are you planning for Easter?
I love it. So many smiles across the room. And a lot of guys just decided to wear the same shirt. I don't know if you've noticed that, but you know. It's all good. But um, if you are a guest, if you are new here today, we'd love to welcome you once again. And I'd like to ask you for a big, big ask. Would you, if you are willing to, fill out a connection card? And you can find that connection card in the seat pocket in front of you or behind you if you're sitting on the front row. Um, and just let us know that this is your first time. We'd love to send you a welcome gift. And you can also do it online at ecc4.org. If you want to do it that way digitally, you can do it digitally. But we'd love an opportunity to connect with you if you are a guest, if this is your first time with us. And if you're watching online, you can do so online too by going to ecc4.org. Or there'll be a link that'll come up on the chat that you can click on. So thank you for doing that. And then I want to invite you. We have a few invitations for you because we want you to be part of this. We don't want you to just come and then leave and then forget. But we want you to engage and be part of what God is doing here. So one of the ways that you can engage is by being part of our spring groups that are coming up really quick. So one of them is Alpha. And Alpha is an open and informal conversation about life and spirituality without judgment or pressure. So if you're here and you're just interested in having that conversation, we'd love for you to check out Alpha. And again, you can go to ecc4.org and check out the groups. The information is also behind me. So make sure you check that out. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And then we're inviting you Back to next Sunday. Next Sunday. Say next Sunday. Sunday. Oh, you guys are so good. I love this. Like, come, can we do this every Sunday? So next Sunday, we have an opportunity for you to come back again. We have services at 9.15 and 11 a.m. And we're starting a new series called Biggies. The Biggies. And these are the big questions that you'd like to ask God. Like, why is there suffering in the world? Or why do... Good, bad things happen to good people. Whatever it is, I know there's big questions that we all tackle. So we're bringing that on next week. And we invite you to be a part of that. Invite your friends. Um, and then one last thing I want to say is thank you. Gracias. For your generosity. We are so grateful that you are a generous people. And as a church, we get to give to fund the mission of the church, which is to help people find and follow Jesus. And so thank you. If you want to practice generosity today, you can in person by dropping off that offering in the boxes um, behind you in the back of the room. Or you can go to ecc4.org and uh, slash give and give that way. But because of you and because of your generosity, get this. This year, starting this year, we get to be part of coming together with a village in Guatemala called Chicalte, And they are building a computer lab for the students in their village. And we get to be a part of that. And not only building a computer lab, but we're building bathrooms for the students there. We love kids and youth at this church here, near, and far. So thank you for being a part of that. I am so grateful that I get to practice generosity with you. Okay, are we ready for the message? So part, part of doing church is listening to, to the word be delivered through the person today. And so today we are going to get to hear from this wonderful man here, Carlos. Would you give it up for him? Well, happy Easter, Evergreen and new friends. It is so good. I didn't give you a chance to respond. Some of you want to say happy Easter back. So go ahead. Thank you. There you go. My mom taught me well. Uh, as I was sitting there in worship, I, I realized Jesus is true to his word. He said that he would build his church. And we are in his presence as he does that. And if it takes one baby blue striped shirt at a time, <laughs> then we're, up, we're here for it. We're here for it. <sighs> well, as uh, Ilsian shared, my name is Carlos, and together we get to uh, be part of this wonderful evergreen team. Uh, we also have a daughter, our three-year-old. This is our family picture here. This is my family. Yes. And... We love being a part of this faith community we call Evergreen. We really do. We're having a blast. And if this is your first time joining us online or in person, we welcome you. Uh, we're so honored that you would spend your Sunday morning with us. We hope that you are encouraged. Um, we moved here. Uh, from, uh, we moved to Oregon in 2020 from California. I know, I know I'm one of those. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> 
But we absolutely love our lives in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, uh, we so much appreciate the amount of beauty that we have access to. We can regularly take a drive and be in some of God's most beautiful creations. Can I get an amen? Amen, Amen. yes. And we know that one of the attractions, the global attractions, people come here from all over the world, is the majestic Mount Hood. The majestic Mount Hood. And so this is a Google image of how cool it can look. Uh, behind um, a talented photographer. Um, And although uh, Ilsen and I and now Charlie Joy have lived here for over four years, it wasn't until last fall that I finally made the space and time to get an up-close and clear view of Mount Hood. Can you believe I went that long? Can you you say, how dare you, Carlos? How dare you? (laughs) But we almost missed it. Um, because we were in the Mount Hood area, we were spending some time out there actually planning for this year, and we had an unexpected, perfectly blue sky day. And can you believe it? In the most perfect conditions, Ilsen and I were driving in the opposite direction, <laughs> away from Mount Hood. You can say, Carlos, that's silly. That's silly, right? And as we were maybe 30 minutes away, um, I wised up. I realized this was our chance. This was the day that we can get that picturesque view of Mount Hood. And surely it would be everything I was looking for. And surely I would post it on my Instagram and be the coolest guy in my friends group. And so we did what all Oregon transplants do. We Googled best views of Mount Hood. (laughs) That's That's how we do it, right? And we found that a nearby lakes claimed some of the best views. And so, skrr, we hit an, uh, I hit an illegal U-turn, or Ilsian was forced to. Um, (laughs) She had no choice. I was driving. And we went wherever Google Maps told us to go. And it took us. And we drove for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And it took us to this lake's day use area. And I remember, like, just the, uh, uh, the excitement in me growing as we got closer. And as you watch down the time, 15 minutes away, 10 minutes away, 7 minutes away. And I was getting so excited that I started to break out into a song that went like this. This is the day, this is the day that I see Mount Hood, that I see Mount Hood. I remixed it. I remixed the classic. I was so excited. And so we finally get to the destination, guys, and I am so excited. And can you believe it? It was closed. Wah, 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 wah. And you can believe the amount of disappointment that I was in, and I was ready to call it a day. I mean, we had been driving now for 45 minutes. This was not part of our plans. And I was willing to settle of the many decent views, the views we all get when we drive around in that area. I was, I was happy to settle with those. But of course, that wasn't the end. Let me tell you what happened next. Ilsian suggested that we drive a little further and see what more we could find, right? She just said, let's just keep driving. I said, gas is expensive. She said, let's keep driving. Yep, let's do it. (laughs) So we did. And to our surprise, we found that there was a whole other parking area, bigger, better, and most importantly, it was open. (laughs) Yes. And so friends, what we were hoping for that day was to get a good view of Mount Hood. That's what we were hoping to find, and this is what we experienced. Check it out. You can say, wow. You can say, ooh. You could say, is that, is that AI? No, that, that's real. That's real. My camera. I took that. I did that. That's me. So that October day, as you can see, I wasn't joking, crystal clear blue skies at the edge of a lake called Trillium. Yeah, yeah, Trillium Lake. I, and I think Elsian, 
we got everything we were looking for. It was better than we had imagined. It was more than what we were hoping. I mean, look at your boy. Look at this picture. Right? That is not, that's not Google anymore. That's the real deal. Right? And so to say that I was happy would be an understatement. To say I was thrilled would be an understatement. And so my question, I'm going to ask you a couple questions this Easter. The first one is this. Has this ever happened to you? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Have you? Here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm asking. Have you ever found everything you're looking for? Have you ever discovered everything you're hoping for or experienced everything you're longing for? Well, if you and I were to have an honest moment, maybe around some coffee, uh, we, would, we would agree that a lot of life can actually give us the opposites. A lot of our existence can be muddled with disappointment and heartache. I mean, very rarely does the restaurant live up to the hype. <laughs> or the Airbnb true to its Pinterest presentation. <laughs> Unless it's my friend's Airbnbs, by the way. Those are good. <laughs> Not too often is the vacation destination better than the reviews. Or the job, the dream job. Um, or the movie as good as the trailer. Or the relationship Hallmark worthy, or worse, rarely is the pantry completely full, the family happy, the marriage thriving, the diagnosis positive, the depression lifted, the anxiety calm. But every now and then, we do, we do get to experience everything we're looking for, and even on a rarer occasion, we get more than we could ever hope for. And this is the experience that the first followers of Jesus were, began to have on the first morning of Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday. And here's how it started. It started with a small group of women visiting the tomb where Jesus was laid to rest after being rejected by his own people, betrayed by his closest friends, and brutally crucified by those in power. One can only assume that their motivation was a collective desire to give Jesus the decency. I mean, can he at least have a decent Jewish burial service? Maybe perhaps it was their way of having one final act of service towards their beloved teacher. Or perhaps this was their chance for closure to the biggest letdown of their lives. And so I read, I, I believe that with good intentions, but no real plan for rolling away the, t the stone, sealing the tomb, the women went to the burial site that morning. And that's what I want to reflect on today. So let's pick up the Easter story here in Matthew 28. I'll read it to you. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped at his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. 
There they will see who? Me. They will see Jesus. Yes, yes. Now, I want to... Um, I want to share a few observations and then make one application. And so uh, as you read this on your own, you're going to have your own, but these are the ones that stood out to me. The first one is that the women, um, they came with an objective. It was really clear. The women came looking for a dead Jesus. They came to tend to a lifeless body. And that's what they were hoping to find. That was their sole purpose for waking up that morning was to do just that. To care for his body in this moment was the best their minds could imagine. This was the most that their hearts could hope for. Yet as we read, their searching is interrupted and it's far from subtle. It's an earthquake that erupts and ends with a non-human casually sitting on the large stone that was sitting, that was supposed to keep anyone, anyone from stealing Jesus' body. And that's kind of comedic to me as I read that, right? Can you imagine that? I don't think we can. <laughs> then this angelic being, he begins to spit the facts. He, he begins to say, say what's real. And he first starts by saying this, Jesus was crucified. They were all witness to this. This was not news. This was undisputable. The women themselves stood at a distance as they watched Jesus take his last breaths on a Roman cross. He also reminded them that Jesus was buried. They were standing in the very location. And we know that a very um, influential and powerful Jesus follower named Joseph personally took it upon himself to ask Pilate for Jesus' body and then offered his private tomb. We know that. Those are facts. We also know that the tomb was empty. Jesus' body was not there. The fact that the seal was removed by a powerful being, by the angel, meant that anyone in the area can go and see where the body was supposed to be. And we, we see from other accounts that other disciples would go in and not only would they see an empty tomb, but they would see the leftover linens, further proof that Jesus once was buried there. But here's what was shocking. Here's what had them shook, as Gen Z would say, right? The women, what the women didn't know, what they didn't expect, what became good news to them and to us was was more than they could ever hope or imagine or expect was this, that Jesus is alive, that he is risen, He is risen indeed, and thus marks the beginning of our faith proclamation. The thing that makes us distinct is this very thing, that we have placed our hope, our lives, our worship on a God who sent his son, who raised him from the dead, and now is alive, seated at the right hand of the Father. Friends, if you don't know, Jesus is alive. And that is what we celebrate today. Amen. You can celebrate that. And that's why we sing. That's why we sing. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. He's alive. I'm trying out for the worship team, by the way. They're not giving me a shot. So I'll just, I'll just take this time. Right? That's why we sing those lyrics, because we believe them, because they have been revealed, and they are foundation to our reality. But no one, no one called this. No one expected this. No one would even dare imagine or even hope for this. This was more than anyone could have hoped for. And so you see the angel announced that day the best part of the good news, that Jesus beat death. He beat death not only for himself, but promised to beat death for us. And in doing that, he did what he said he would do, making Jesus forever trustworthy and forever powerful. Jesus is alive. And lastly, the women were told where to go and who to look for. It's simple. It's a one-sentence 
statement, go to Galilee, there you will see Jesus. And this too is part of the Easter revelation. This is part of the good news because they were told that they, not only was Jesus alive, but that they can now find Jesus. In other words, from dead body, the object of their search became a living person. Now think about that. The object of their search that morning became a person, a living person. And so may I suggest to you this Easter that the same is true for us, that nothing has changed, that the object of our life search, our longing is found in a person, that the the destination that you and I are ultimately after is a relationship. And this is why what we are proclaiming today is that everything, everything you and I are looking for is found in Jesus. Everything that you and I are looking for is found in Jesus. And we know that this life gives us tons of options, (laughs) especially uh, today with technology and the fast-paced life you and I are invited to live in. I mean, we get a menu of philosophies, of religions and ideologies and competing worldviews. And I believe that Jesus doesn't offer any of that. He offers himself alive. He offers a personal relationship with him that leads to having a personal relationship with our creator, our maker, God, the Father. And he does this through the knowledge and revelation of his written word and the gift and guidance of his Holy Spirit. That is what he offers us. Jesus says, I give you myself alive. I offer an invitation to you to have a relationship with me. And let me tell you, this is everything you're longing for and more. And that's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus is to many of us, and that's who Jesus is, um, who, who we want Jesus to be to anyone willing to say yes to him, because he is more than we could ever hope for, better than our biggest dreams, greater than our best achievements. Jesus is everything we're looking for, because he can be our everything. Jesus can be our everything, our source of hope. Because he beat death for himself, he promised to do it for us. And he himself says in John 14, 19, because I live, you also will live. Do you see the relationship there? Jesus can be our source of strength because he gives us his spirit that raised him from the dead. Paul later writes in Romans 8, 11, another follower of Jesus, he says, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in who? Lives in us, right? Lives in those that put their faith in him. It says lives in you. And Jesus can be our healer because the prophet Isaiah prophesied about him about 700 years before his feet touched earth that by his wounds we are healed. And so friends, Jesus can be everything we're looking for and more. The late author and Presbyterian pastor Tim Keller wrote it this way, though most spiritual seekers start their search afraid of disappointment, Jesus says he will always be infinitely more than anyone is looking for. He will always exceed our expectations. He will always be more than we can ask for or imagine. And so I would I would agree with Pastor Tim Keller and say whatever you're expecting, whatever you're hoping, whatever you're dreaming, you will discover something much better in Jesus. He is, time and time again, a thousand times better than the best views of Mount Hood. Trust me, I've had them, right? He is far more restful than our most restful vacation. He supersedes the dream job or the feelings of getting perfect grades or finding the ideal hallmark relationship. He's better than anything this life can offer 
because Jesus is the author of life. And he said so himself, I am the resurrection and the life. And so my encouragement to you today is to know, to believe, and to respond to a Jesus that is everything we're looking for. And he can be that in your yesterday, in your today, and tomorrow, and forever. And I want to end with one final observation, and then I'm done, I promise. The women were told to take one next best step. Can you say that with me? One next best step. Here's where I see that. Both the angel and Jesus say something similar to them, go and tell. That's it. I mean, think about how simple that is. How many of us can go and tell? You're like, depending on what, right? But we can all do this. And yet, even though they are experiencing this spectacular, supernatural, once in a human history event called resurrection, the response to the resurrection, I would describe as simple, practical, doable. And can you imagine if these women didn't do that? Can you imagine if after having encountered the resurrected Jesus, can you imagine after having heard the news from the angel, can you imagine after having clung to Jesus and worshiping at his feet, can you imagine if they left all of that and just lived a normal life? That would be shocking, right? That would be silly. No one would think of that. I mean, can you imagine if they were saying to themselves, Jesus indeed is alive. He's alive. And all this excitement has made me so hungry. How about we go to brunch? <laughs> no knock on anyone going to brunch after this, by the way. That's totally fine, right? But can you imagine if they said, Jesus is alive. And I know that he said, go and tell. But that, can we get to that later? That's not how I planned my day or my week. Or could you imagine if they said, Jesus is alive, but this go and tell thing, it's intrusive to my life plans, and I'd just rather not. Here's what I'm trying to say. Their response was critical to them being a part of the greatest story in human history. And yet, their response was so practical, doable. And here's what we believe. Jesus alive is news too important not to respond to. Jesus alive is news too important not to respond to. It has far too many reality-changing implications. Jesus alive carries way too much hope and healing and power for you and for me and our neighbor and our world. Jesus alive is, is news too important to scroll through and ignore. And yet something so big, I believe, just requires one simple, one practical, one doable step at a time. And so this is my second question to you this Easter What's your one next best step in response to Jesus is alive? In other words, what is God asking you to do? How are you responding to this incredible news? And as you think about that, I want you to think about what can you do that's practical, that's simple, that's doable? that's going to move you towards knowing Jesus better, that's going to move you towards experiencing his love, that's going to move you towards, take a step towards trusting him more or receiving his love at a deeper level. The band is going to join us, and we're going to be closing out with one final song, and we'll invite you to respond during that song. But as you are contemplating the Easter story this morning, whether you've heard it for the 
uh, 70th time or, or this is the first time you've been at an Easter service and heard it shared this way, um, I want to just offer a few practical steps that you can take with Evergreen or at another local church. If you're watching online, maybe you're in a different area, there's a local church that many uh, would, would also support you in these decisions. So what do I think of uh, when I think of one next best step? I think of what we just celebrated. 12 people deciding that they're going to go public with their faith and say yes to Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Can we celebrate that again? Wasn't that incredible? <laughs> so maybe, maybe you're a follower of Jesus. You've said yes to him. You believe in him. You're submitted to his ways, um, but you've, you've, not, you've not gone public. You've, you've not taken the step of obedience that he says. He, he invites us into water baptism. Maybe for you it's water baptism. We'd be happy to participate in that when, whenever, whenever you decide to do that. We'd love to be a part of that and celebrate you. Maybe for you, you have more questions than answers. By the way, me too. Um, and so for you, that alpha group that Ilsian shared is a great space for you. It's a small group that's supposed to be safe that's supposed to be high conversation, um, that just allows you to think through some of the foundational or kind of big pieces of the Christian faith. And so you don't have to believe to belong, but you're welcome to come and wrestle and grow in your knowledge of God through signing up on Alpha. And there's going to be, there's a handout, there's a, a bookmark that you can take home that has all the information. And if that's not worth it, we'll also give you din- dinner and take care of your kids for an hour and a half. So <laughs> Parent, parents. Maybe for you, you don't need Alpha, but you just need community. You, you need to not be in a big group, but you need to know a small group of six to ten people. And so you're going to sign up for one of the men's and women's groups. Or you are a pickleball expert and you want to school everyone, but you want to do life with other believers as well. We have a pickle, pickleball group this spring. I'm excited. Maybe for you, it's as simple as this. Um, you were invited by a friend, uh, but you don't normally attend a church on Sundays. But you are going to s- decide today that you're going to come back. That's it. That's your one next best step. You are going to come back and see what God might have for you. All of these things can be done um, by filling out a connection card. You can tell us how you want to do these things. They're in the seat pocket in front of you. Um, You can also go online for ecc4.org forward slash connect. And lastly, maybe your next step is not on this screen. This isn't meant to be an exhaustive list. This is why I want to give you a moment to talk to God. How are you responding this Easter, to Jesus being alive, what does taking a step towards him look like in your life? And so I'm going to invite you to bow your heads as a opportunity to uh, just take a moment. And if you're willing to, you can close your eyes. You don't have to. If you're not comfortable with that, please don't do that. But there is an invitation I want to give to those of you who um, haven't taken what we believe is the biggest step, the first step, the initial step, the critical step, and that's the decision to say yes to Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you know that God has been after you. He's been pursuing you. He's, he's been nudging at you, getting your attention through good and hard things in life. And maybe today, this Easter morning, you are ready to say yes to Jesus. And maybe you're doing that for the first time. If that's you today, here's how we're going to do it. With everyone's head bowed down and eyes closed, I'm going to invite you to look up at me so that we can agree about your faith decision. And it's nothing about me on stage or anything that I'm going to say that's going to make this moment real. It's your faith. It's your response to saying yes to Jesus. And so if you're ready, you can look up at me, and I am going to agree with you. And I see some of you looking up at me, and I agree with you. If you're ready to... Receive God's love for your life. I see you, and I see you. He loves you. That's why he came. I see you, and I see you, and I see you. You can look up at me. I see you. I see you. I see your eyes. And God sees your heart. I see you, and I see you. Praise God, and I see you. And if, and if I'm not acknowledging you, that has nothing to do with this moment. 
God knows your heart. And so if you're ready to say, yes, I see you, regardless of your story, know that he loves you and he invites you and I see you. This is why he came, to present himself alive so that we would have relationship with him. I see you in the back. I see you. If there's anyone else, you can look up at me and we're going to pray together. Jesus, thank you. Your love overflows. What you did on that cross for us, offering forgiveness, dying for our place, living the life we couldn't live, God, we are responding to you. And Lord, we lift up the individuals in this room or watching online that are saying yes to you, God. Would you respond to them? I know that you see them. I know that you love them. I know that you have forgiven them. I know that you are giving your Holy Spirit to dwell in them, to guide them and grow them in all your ways. Lord, would we receive your newness that you offer, that you earned for us? We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to respond to you. And we love you and we pray all these things in your son's powerful name. Amen and amen. amen. I'm going to invite you to stand up. And as we stand, first, can we celebrate the faith decisions in the room today? We're going to be singing one final song. And here's what I want you to know. Everyone has a opportunity to respond. So maybe you've been following Jesus, but... Your decision looks like something else. Allow your body to reflect that you are responding to Jesus is alive today. You can raise your hands. You can clasp your hands. You can use your voice. You can get out of your aisle if you need a little bit of space. You can come to the front. These next two minutes, I want you to respond with your body, whatever that looks like. Show yourself that Jesus is alive in you. Amen. Let's do that.
holy, always worthy, not just on Easter. He's always good, and he's always God, and he's always worthy of our lives. Amen? Amen. If you said yes to Jesus, you need to tell someone. You need to tell the friend that invited you, the family member. You need to tell us. You don't have to tell us, but you can tell us. You can tell us in person. You can fill out a connection card. You can meet with the connections team in the back. There's a gift for you that is maybe helpful for these next few days on your journey with Jesus. Know our heart is that you should not walk with Jesus alone. You're meant to do it in community. We offer ourselves as a community. You can choose that. Also, uh, you're invited back next week as we get into this new series called The Biggies. Um, you're, please come and join us. And right now, you get to go into the lobby, meet someone new, and eat a macaroon or two. So uh, don't forget to pick up your kids. Have a blessed Easter. We love you, Evergreen.